something that's filtering slowly through the medical establishment. But one of the issues with it is it's somewhat in controversial because no one wants to be the person who stands up and says, you must take a pill every day to be normal. I have a hard time dealing with that. Either. Yes. I mean, but what you, you know, can do, which is very simple, is as get opposed a to working out, you know. Yeah, but you can get a blood test. Because it is a deficiency. It's like being anemic. Can you want I, to find out where you are. Can I produce? I'm sorry. To interrupt. Can I produce vitamins through exercise? No, not this one. It has you can to be produce wild. a lot of good stuff, but the only way you're going to get vitamin D is from the sun, from oily fish in particular, which is why some cultures lived an almost completely oily fish-based diet, especially far up on the globe. Like salmon. Yeah or milk, because we add it milk. And we don't add it to all milk products, it's only in milk. Um, so it's not in cottage cheese, unless the label says they also added it to the cottage cheese. So again, to use my mom as an example, she eats salmon, she eats fish a day, if not three times a week. Right? She has a good diet. Yeah, and broccoli, and uh, some type of grain, you know, like rice. Or she still should get hers checked. Oh, she does. A, yeah, she's, I mean her vitamin D level. Oh, her vitamin D level. Yeah. Okay. Simple, easy blood test. Cheap, 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 and easy to fix if you're low. So it should be one of those basic, like checking under the hood things that everybody gets done. So now, um, I'm a woman in her 40s, and I've had two kids. Uh, what What's different now? Now there's been a big controversy about whether you should be getting your mammograms every year or not. Personally, I think you should. And most medical organizations have lined up behind that statement also. Um, the reasons why recently they said maybe you shouldn't or maybe you should go to every two years even if you're in your 50s is because people looked at the numbers and thought, okay, we're causing a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. um, and really a lot of it was based on stress, about false positives. Mm -hmm. the false positive What's a false positive? Is, false positive is you go and have your mammogram done, you get your boobs squeezed, mm -hmm. and they say, uh, we see this little smudge. And then maybe you freak out, and then it takes you a couple weeks to get a biopsy done. And then the biopsy shows, oh, it's fine. Or not. Uh-huh. Now, and you um, spent all that money for that, right, too, right? Yes, but even the cost, it's still cost-effective and it still saves lives. But when you factor in stress, because the way these studies are done is they think, okay, how many lives are we saving? Right. But how much does it cost in dollars? Oh, wait, how much does it also cost in quality life years? Mm -hmm, and they mm -hmm. start to ratchet down the benefits, looking at its negative impact on people who didn't turn out they have cancer. And what they don't do is they don't add in the positive benefits of knowing you're taking care of your health. They uh. also don't add in the positive benefits of you knowing you got something dealt with that could have been something bad or that you want to be there for your kids. You mm -hmm. cannot, there's no way to push the numbers up. You can only push the number down. And that's the way those models are set up. And so, I also honestly, I think it's very patronizing to tell women, we don't think you can deal with the stress. Even if you're saving your life or someone else's life. Hey. Does that commonly happen though? Where I think that, that message is, is, is put out there? You know? I don't know. It definitely was not put out there for minimal prostate cancer. And false positives of prostate cancer cause a lot more problems. You now, can end up impotent, dead, or incontinent. That's much more complicated than just case, having a needle biopsy. I was told I have something called prosthesis. Yeah. So I have to drink a lot of water to flush. Yes. Or, you, you know, you want to get sexually your have somebody there too. to help me relieve my toxins, if you will. <laughs> which is fun. Be, I was going to say, that's going to be an interesting pickup line to pull off. Um. <laughs> hey, you help me relieve my toxins. <laughs> My, my advice is don't use the word prosthesis on the first three dates. What, should, what word should I use? Prostatitis. <laughs> prostatitis, that's what I mean, right. Or even prostatitis. I wouldn't use prostatitis <laughs> on the first three dates either. Um, Boom. You should get your vitamin D checked too. It's also associated with prostate cancer, hmm. both of which occur more commonly in the African American community. Right, right. My father, my father and my stepfather. You really need to get year. your vitamin D checked. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, uh, to tell you, if this I, is how if bad I need it a, is. How do, I, how do I get a rapid dose of vitamin D to make up for a deficiency? Now, here's the deal. Vitamin D, you can overdose on, which is one of the other reasons they just don't make some blanket statement that everybody should take, you know, thousands and thousands of units a day because you can hurt yourself. So you really want to get your blood test and you really want to dose up till you're normal and then you want to stay at normal. And for some people that How means... How do I know what normal is? Get your blood get, test. Get test, okay. Yeah. And uh, it's really important. It's the only thing we have that makes your immune system not only work better, but smarter. Okay, so off me and back to... All right, now I'm a 50-year-old woman. Yes. And the kids are still there, you know, well, or in some cases maybe they're leaving the coop, right? Yes. Where am I now? Right now, you're going to hopefully be getting your mammograms for sure. Because hmm. starting around 55, the benefits of mammograms go way up. And that's probably, there's another secret reason for that. That's probably because as women go through menopause, their breasts get better to mammogram. When women are young, you know those firm Playboy or porn site breasts that you see? They actually don't mammogram that well. I was going to ask you, those are fake tits. The, the, the soft, swinging ones, right. those are great for mammogramming. You can so wait, really wait. see so you're saying, stuff. Okay, this is interesting, right? So let's... let's it's called it, dense. Hold on a second, folks. All right. All right, let's go back to that point. All right. If a woman has fake boobs... Yeah, she's going to have some issues. What kind? So there have been reports that you can rupture an implant by doing a mammogram. You can imagine that's not a good outcome for anybody involved. Um, you can also... You can because, rupture an implant? Yeah, because mammograms shouldn't scare anybody. They're not as painful as people, even me, joke about. Mm -hmm. But they're not really comfortable. You would not be telling the truth to tell a patient it's not going to be a little uncomfortable. But people get their blood drawn all their time. Men have to get rectal exams all the time. They have biopsies all the time. Yeah. So it's not as painful as all that. But it is a fair amount of pressure. And so uh, implants, as they get older, are prone to rupture anyways. So the lifespan of an implant is not forever. It's about six to 10 years. And so if you've had your implants in for a while and you're getting your mammograms done, it's probably not a big surprise if there are case reports that an implant has ruptured with the mammogram. That's one issue, but that should not scare women from getting their mammograms because mammograms save lives. There's no doubt about so it. So I have to ask this because I know women who are in their well, 22, yeah. and they have boob yeah. jobs. Yes. So they're at really major risk. Well, what they're at risk for is... Unless they're bodybuilders, maybe? No. Or does that make a difference? It doesn't make a difference, because what a mammogram is trying to take a picture of is the fatty breast tissue, not the muscle. And the problem with the implant is that it displaces all the breast tissue, and you can't actually get a good picture of it. It shows up on the mammogram as sort of a very abnormally weight out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a line to it, which is not a normal human function to have a line through the middle of your mammogram whiting out a big chunk of it. It's technically difficult, more difficult, to get good mammograms. So, you know, but when you're 22, are you really worrying about that? But you could say, are plastic surgeons doing a good job of informed consent? Are they? Uh, no one's checking. Um, I think also besides thinking there's... What body should be checking that? What, what, what governing body or what... Na what yes. Nobody does? There's not... Really? No, no not le really, no. In fact, you know, Octomom's doctor just got charged with gross negligence. And even that will be an interesting case because it all is based on what was charted um, is what it's going to boil down to. And um, I think it's going to be somewhat complicated. It's another issue of informed consent. Did he actually say what the ramifications were? And did she actually understand and agree? And so the same is true for implants. Is someone actually explaining? And is it documented the person understood the risk? And did they actually agree? And most of us know if you go to the doctor, you get this giant form that's like the you know, consent to use iTunes right. thing where you just click, I agree, because right. who's going to read it all? A lot of in informed consent may be like that, but that's a shame because I think it actually should be a process where people talk about it and they know. Right. And unfortunately, um, when it comes to procedures, doctors frequently have a conflict of interest. What do you mean? Uh, they get paid. I mean, I know what you mean, but... Yes, for, getting, for doing it. So a plastic surgeon, in terms of just conflict of interest, right. may not be the best person to tell you in a way that you would, you know, sort of have the space and time to grasp all the potential risks. 
maybe a better idea if you want to have one to talk to your regular doctor about it first so that you're clear on what the long-term implications are. Um, if you go to a place that's doing plastic surgery, then we're likely to talk to you about what you want as an outcome in terms of aesthetics, not what's going to happen 30 years down the line. They'll discuss that, but that won't be the time when you're really thinking about that. Is it That sets up a, a side question, which, I mean, I know your expertise isn't in the law, but it would seem to me that it sets up a scenario where down the line, a plastic surgeon could be sued for something they did years ago. Yes? Yeah. I mean, that's true for all surgeons. It's There's no statute of limitations for a lot of things in medicine. It's one of the reasons why it's very difficult to be a surgeon and pay your malpractice insurance. Some of it is valid. Some of it is not so valid. And so, and there's no, there's we don't do a good job regulating ourselves as a profession. We really don't. So now we're going from 60s to 70s as a woman. And the kids are grown and they're out of the house and they've got grandkids and all that. And one of the interesting things about women is we do better taking care of ourselves when we know the reasons for doing so. Hmm. So women will often stop doing such a great job of taking care of themselves in those years, studies show. But if it's tied to, I want to see my grandchild graduate from high school, Mm -hmm. then they'll often do a better job of taking that femora forever. Or I want to see my son have a kid so I can be a grandma. Exactly. (laughs) Uh, Not to get too specific. (laughs) But when it's tied to something that is in a weird way, studies have shown when it's tied to something a woman cares about, she will take better care of herself than she will if it's just, you should do this. Hmm. And so in her 60s and 70s, it's really important for women to understand that it benefits everyone if they care for themselves and for everybody who cares for these women to let them know that they want them to care for themselves. I see that because my mom has said, yeah, Yeah. she goes, I'm I'm sticking sticking around for that time when you... (laughs) Or a father. Yes, you have to start working on those pickup lines. Oh, Um, God. Yeah, I, I don't use pickup lines. I just I don't think they work. I just actually. talk. No, um, they don't. Yeah. I, that was from, uh, another time. So in their 60s and 70s is when mammogram is most effective. You hear a lot of talk about 40s and 50s right. for good reasons. Women have their lives ahead of them. They're worried about their children. Mm-hmm. You know, seeing them raised. It's a tragedy, no doubt about it, when women get breast cancer young. No one's arguing that's not true. But what's weird is in the public, many of us don't realize that it is the 60s and 70s when they are really hugely effective. So you want to be getting them every year, and you want to be getting your check under the hood. It makes a big difference. If you find it early, you take it out, you're fine. If you're, Women often won't get them done because they're afraid somebody will find something. And it's weirdly the opposite. You kind of want to be like, you know what? I'm just showing up. I'm getting my work done. They'll take care of it. Because that's when you get a fast, clean cure. So I guess the same applies to a woman in her 80s and 90s? When you get to your 80s and 90s. Or should they be fortunate yes. enough to make it that far? Actually, when you get to your 80s and 90s, studies don't show that it makes as big a difference. Hmm. And part of it is because your lifespan is not so long anyway, so it's hard to show a huge 10-year survival. It's also partly, and most people may not know this, because the tumors people get in those late years may be slow growing. Um, much younger people tend to get more aggressive tumors in general. Why is that? They don't really know. Is it? Um, I mean... Let me posit a theory from a guy who knows the Zen. Is it that we're more energetic to begin with and therefore we're, we're producing more energy and whatever is going to be the negative reaction is a reaction to the energy we're producing? Sort of like Our metabolic that. rate, yeah. you know? Yeah. Our metabolic rate. Yeah, yeah. things are more aggressive. Uh, your body repairs more aggressively, it mm-hmm. heals more aggressively, but then when it misfires, it may misfire more aggressively. And I think it's also because your immune system is so much better at stamping things out the younger you are. If something has escaped that surveillance system, it was probably pretty nasty. Um, and um, that's one of the things. In other about words, it had to be it had to be that strong to it get had out. To be kind of strong to get out. Wow. Wow. And also, when with women in particular, estrogen-driven tumors are more treatable. Yeah. Estrogen-resistant tumors are nasty. And so, if you're younger, you can get an estrogen-resistant tumor. 
Fomara is good for women who have estrogen sensitive tumors. It blocks all estrogen and that sort of stops feeding the tumor. Yeah, when they uh, administered Fomara on my mom, they said it was, uh, she was a clinical trial. It was an early stage drug at the time. And now it's a really well studied intervention. And now they're actually, another reason they keep getting your health care, they're extending the amount of time you should take it mm -hmm. because studies are showing that. So Even the five-year rule is dead. It's now a ten-year rule. Ah, okay. So the five-year rule is what Because she had a concern with. about that. She thought yeah. that she was supposed to be off of it. Keep taking it. That's what the studies show. If, she, if a person takes it, like my mom thinks that she has a bone marrow reaction or stuff, what should she do as a side effect to counter? Well, she would need to talk to her doctor. Right. Because it's really hard to know, you know, individually what that means. Mm -hmm. But in general... It's hard for women to keep taking these pills. I mean, it's hard for anybody to take these pills for 10 years. But when you think about taking a pill that daily reminds you of your breast cancer. Right. But what you want to do is try and reframe it as a plus. Studies show that when people think of things in negative terms, they don't tend to do so well. So if, for example, you tell people they should get colon Like me and high blood screening. pressure pills. Yeah, you want to think of it as doing yourself benefit um, all the time. So if you tell people they should get colon cancer screening because um, their group doesn't get much and people are dying, they tend to not want to get it. Despair is a bad thing in health. You want to oh. frame it as a positive. If you frame it as, this is a great thing, your group should have it too, it saves lives, it's a plus, then people will turn up much more frequently to do it. Now, and they've done studies to show that. Only for the interest of the video, it was great talking to you. you know, it's great talking yeah. to you. Now, how do people find you? Um, you can find me at SF Gate in the City Brights, and you can also find me at my blog, which is www.docgurley.com. You can find me. You can find me. You can find you at my blog too. Exactly. <laughs> Zenny62.com. Zenny62.com. Hey, thanks a lot. Thank you. you got it. Cool.